Okay. Now, before before we get into that, let uh, as far as you know, you know as, as far as the diabetes, because uh, that's one more thing I want to talk about because I feel that's important. You finally had your uh, leg amputated at what age? It was nine two thousand twelve. That's right. We're on live. We're gonna get this thing done one way or another. What's up, to y'all? Hi, I'm John Robert Wilkin, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about my life as a type 1 diabetic and all that that um, included, which is a lot. So this is like war and peace. Um, make sure you've got your Diet Coke or your beer or your, and your bowl of popcorn because it's going to take some time to tell you my whole story. Um, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when I was eight years old, which was, I hate to say this, but 1967, a long time ago. And um, at that time, um, there wasn't a lot known about the disease, except that when a child was diagnosed with it, you were not, it was like given a life sentence. My parents were told that I probably wouldn't make it to 30. Mm -hmm. And I'm 61 years old today. So, you know, you can't believe everything a doctor tells you. Um, and I won't blame it on them because it's just a matter of research. And some research takes time. Some research in the medical industry is not um, the priority um, of the time. And so, and so for whatever reasons, um, after making it past 30 and then past 33, I lived to be as old as Jesus. Um, <laughs> research got better, I took better care of myself. But, but as a kid, like I think all children who are diagnosed with this disease, I hated it. And, um, you know, not being able to eat my mother's pineapple upside down cake or ho-hos or Twinkies or I mean, all those things that we were kind of brought up in back in those days. Kolachkis, my grandma's Polish cookies that she would make for us at Christmas time. All of a sudden, all that stuff was taboo. And, you know, how does an eight year old understand that? Um, all I understood was that um, before I left the hospital, which I was diagnosed at Christmas time. That was like my Christmas gift in 1967. Um, all I knew was that for the rest of my life, I was going to have to take a shot every day. And I was going to, I couldn't leave the hospital until I knew how to give it to myself. Now, back in those days, syringes were not disposable like we know of them today. They were glass, they had to be boiled, and you reused them. The needles were fatter. Um, and as a result of all of that, your skin atrophied rather quickly. I mean, you could only, you had to rotate sites continually to, um, to make sure that, that, um, your body would absorb the insulin from the injection. Mm -hmm. So I learned how to do that. Um, I hated having to know how to do that. And when I went home, I was miserable. I, I, I mean, and at eight years old, I was already beginning to hate my life and to wonder what all this talk about God and Jesus was because I couldn't understand why if there really was a God, why he was doing this to someone like me and other people like me. Um, I was born and raised Catholic and 
you know, for a little while, I thought that I even wanted to be a priest, although that idea went away really quickly. But um, because I was miserable, I thought it wasn't fair that only I was miserable. And so as a kid, I went out of my way to make my family's life miserable. What happened was uh, several years later, eight, nine, 10, 11, I was 11 years old. So three years later, my parents had another child um, who was my baby sister. And uh, a year after she was born, she became very ill and was hospitalized. And I just, I, I did, I prayed, I prayed as hard as I could that she would not have diabetes. And I promised God that I would be a better person, that I would stop making my family's life miserable and that I would also make an effort to take better care of myself because despite despite the fact that I was a diabetic, there were still things that I liked doing as a kid and I didn't want my life to be over. So I was grateful for every day. And, um, and, and that was like the beginning of, of a very long, um, and for the most part, happy life. Um, I maybe went back on my promise to God as far as taking better care of myself is concerned. As a teenager, I was rebellious. Did you have any like side effects, or did it, did, you, did it cause yeah, you to all the side effects? A couple of them. What what, what were some of them? <clears throat> um, the first one that I encountered in my early twenties was retinopathy which is where the blood vessels in the retina leak. And so it's like a lava lamp. You see this blood flowing in the back of your eye. And sometimes there can be so much blood that in a short amount of time, you don't see anything. You are totally blind. And later on, you uh, stated before we uh, started filming that you had your leg amputated, is that correct? That was the last um, uh, circumstance that happened to me as a result of being a di diabetic, the last complication. I had, um, for a long time, problems with cellulitis, which is bacteria in the skin, mm -hmm. and that eventually became um, osteomyelitis. And osteomyelitis is an infection of the bone. And so for 17 years, I um, would, in order to fight these infections, which were so bad, and they were worse for me because before that I had a kidney transplant and I was on anti-rejection drugs, which suppress your immune system. So it makes you suspect for all kinds of stuff. And as a result, I had osteomyelitis and then cellulitis and um so for 17 years it wasn't enough to just take a pill orally i needed medication that i would give myself intravenously and so i had a pick line sewn into my arm um and sometimes it would stay in for three months and twice a day once in the morning and once at night i would take that drug and it would take about an hour for it to go in um and then in between those times i would you know get dressed and go to work and try to pretend like there was nothing wrong while i was trying to run my own business and okay uh, now before before we get into that let uh as far as you know, you know as, as far as the diabetes because uh, that's one more thing i want to talk about because i feel yeah. that's important you finally had your uh, leg amputated at what age it was nine, 2012. 